Thanks very much, Derek. And uh, it's wonderful to be here in Warwick. I promise there won't be too much of me talking and a lot of Derek playing, but I thought it would just, just be nice to recap on how Derek got to where he is today. It's amazing now, because he's so much bigger than me, but when Derek was born, he could have fitted on the palm of your hand. He was born three and a half months premature, and uh, really was a fantastic fight for him um, to survive. And you had to have a lot of oxygen, and that affected your eyes, Derek, and also the way you understand language and the way you understand the world. But that was the end of the bad news, because when Derek came, came home from hospital, his family decided to employ the redoubtable nanny who, uh, who was going to look after you, Derek, for really for the rest of your childhood. And nanny's great insight, really, was to think, here's a child who can't see, music must be the thing. For, for Derek, and sure enough, she, she sang, or as Derek called it, warbled <laughs> to him uh, for, his, for his first few years of life. And I think it was that excitement with uh, hearing her voice hour after hour every day that made him think maybe, uh, you know, in his brain something was stirring, some sort of musical uh, gift. Here's a little picture of Derek going up now when you were uh, with your nanny. Now, nanny's great other insight was to think perhaps we should get Derek something to play and sure enough she dragged this little uh, keyboard out of the loft never thinking really that anything much would come of it but Derek your tiny hand must have gone out to that thing and, and, and actually bashed it bashed it so hard they thought it was going to break but um, out of all the bashing after a few months emerged the most fantastic music and uh, th I think that was just a miracle moment, really, Derek, when you realized that all the sounds you hear in the world out there is something that you can copy on the keyboard. That was the great eureka moment. Now, not being able to see meant, of course, that you taught yourself. Uh, you did teach yourself to play. And um, as a consequence, playing the piano for you, Derek, was a lot of knuckles and karate chops and even a bit of nose going on in there. And now, here's um, what Nanny did also do, was to press the record button on one of those little um, early tape recorders that, that they had. And this is a wonderful tape now of Derek playing when you were four years old, having taught yourself, it wasn't actually cockles and muscles, this one is English Country Garden. <laughs>
I think that's just fantastic. You know, there's this little child who can't see, can't really understand much about the world, has no one in the family who plays an instrument, and yet he taught himself to play that. And as you can see from the picture, there was quite a lot of body action going on while you were playing, Derek. Now, along, uh, Derek and I met when he was four and a half years old, and at first, Derek, I thought you were mad, to be honest, because when you played the piano, you seemed to want to play every single note on the keyboard, and also you had this little habit of hitting me out of the way. So uh, as soon as I tried to get near the piano, I was firmly shoved off. And having said to, to, to your dad, Nick, that I would uh, try to teach you, I was then slightly confused as to how I might go about that if I wasn't allowed near the piano. But after a while, I thought, well, the only way is to just pick you up, sh sh shove Derek over the other side of the room, and in the 10 seconds that I got before Derek came back, I could just play something very quickly for him to learn. And in the end, Derek, I think you agreed that we could ha actually have some fun playing the, playing the piano together. As you can see, there's me in my in my early pre-marriage days with a brown beard and little Derek uh, concentrating there. I just realized this is going to be recorded, isn't it? Right, okay. Um, now then, uh, by the age of 10, Derek really had taken the world by storm. Uh, this is a photo of you, Derek, playing at the Barbican with the Royal Philharmonic Pops. And uh, basically, it was, it was just an exciting journey, really. And in those days, Derek, you didn't speak very much, and so there was always a moment of tension as to whether you'd actually understood what it was we were going to play, and whether you'd play the right piece in the right key, and all that kind of thing. But um, the orchestra were wowed as well, and uh, the, the, the press of the world were, were fascinated by your ability to play these fantastic pieces. Now, the question is, how do you do it, Derek? And hopefully, we can tell, show the audience now how it is you do what you do. I think that one of the first things that happened when, when you were very little, Derek, was that your, by the time you were two, your musical ear had already outstripped that of most adults. And so whenever you heard any note at all, if I just play a random note, you knew instantly what it was, and, and you'd got the ability as well to find that note on the piano. Now that's called perfect pitch, and some people have perfect pitch for a few white notes in the middle of the piano. Yes. You can see how <laughs> you get a sense of playing with it. Yeah. Now then. But, Derek, you, your ear is so much more than that. If I just put the microphone down for a bit, I'm going to play a cluster of notes. Uh, those of you who can see will know how many notes, but Derek, of course, can't. Not only can you say how many notes, it's being able to play them all at the same time. Here we are. Forget the terminology, Derek. Fantastic. And it's that ability, that ability to hear simultaneous sounds, not only just single sounds, but when a whole orchestra is playing, Derek, you can hear every note and instantly, through all those hours and hours of practice, reproduce of those on the keyboard that makes you, I think, is the basis of all your ability. Yeah. Now then, it's no use having um, that kind of raw ability without the technique. And luckily, Derek, you decided that once we did start learning, you'd let me help you learn all the scale fingerings. So, for example, using your thumb under in C major. Etc. Yeah. And in the end, you got so quick that things like Flight of the Bumblebee were no problem, were they? No. Right, so here, by the age of 11, Derek was playing things like this. This.
Hold on. Now, the truly amazing thing was, with all those scales, Derek, you can not only play Flight of the Bumblebee in the usual key, but any note I play, Derek can play it on. So if I just choose a note at random, like that one. What about um, in G minor? G minor. Here we go. Fantastic. Well done, Derek. So you see, in, in your brain, Derek, is this amazing musical computer that can instantly recalibrate, recalculate um, all the pieces in the world that are out there. Most pianists would have a heart attack if you said, oh, sorry, do you mind playing Flight of the Bumblebee in B minor instead of A minor? as we went on. In fact, um, the first time, Derek, you played that with, a, with an orchestra, uh, you, you'd learned the version that you learned, and then the orchestra, in fact, did have a different version. So while we were waiting uh, in the two hours before the rehearsal and the concert, Derek listened to the different version and learned it quickly and then was able to, to play it with the orchestra. Fantastic chap. The other wonderful thing about you is memory, that memory. Your, your memory is truly amazing. And every concert we do, we ask the audience to participate, of course, um, by suggesting a piece Derek might like to play. And people say, well, that's terribly brave, because what happens if Derek doesn't know? And I say, no, it's not brave at all, because if you ask for something that Derek doesn't know, you're invited to come and sing it first, and then he'll pick it up. <laughs> <laughs> so just be thoughtful before you suggest something too outlandish. Um, but seriously, would anyone like to, 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 to choose, choose a piece? Because like it's quite dark, you'll just have to shout out, I think. Paganini. Paganini. Derek's going to L.A. soon, and it's a milestone because it means that Derek and I will have spent over 100 hours on long-haul flights together, which <laughs> is quite interesting, isn't it, Derek? Because uh, no matter, you may think 13 hours is a long time to keep talking, but Derek does it effortlessly. Now then, <laughs> um, but in America, they've coined this term the human iPod for Derek, which, which I think is just missing the point, really, because, Derek, you're so much more than an iPod. You're a fantastic, creative musician. And I think that was nowhere clearer to see, really, than when we went to Slovenia. And uh, someone uh, in a longer concert, we, we, we tend to get people joining in. And this person very, very nervously came onto the stage Play and played chopsticks. 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 A bit like this. Like this. Yeah. 
I should really get Derek's manager to come and play as he's sitting there. <laughs> no, just, just teasing. Right, here we go. And what did you do with it, Derek? This is Derek, the musician. with Derek. I think, I think the TED people will kill me, but perhaps it's time for one encore. Oh, one encore. Um, one encore, yes. Yeah. So this is, one of Derek's heroes is the great Art Tatum, who also was a pianist who couldn't see, and also I think like Derek thought that all the world was a piano, and so whenever Art Tatum plays something, it sounds like there's three pianos in the room. And here is Derek's take on Art Tatum's take Tiger on Tiger Rag. Tiger Rag. Thank <laughs> you. 